Hi everybody, hope you are all fine. This is Atik. I once again welcome all of you to our YouTube channel Engineering Drive. In my today's session, let me discuss with all of you fundamentals of computer or in simple terminology, basics of computer. So nowadays, if a person don't have any knowledge about the computer, then it is very difficult to survive in the present market. We know that everybody once in a while they will they are in need of one device which is our computer itself so computer nowadays is available not only in the form of a normal appearance but we can find the computer in, on our wrist also in the form of wrist watches so what is actually a computer what are the parts of a computer what is hardware what is software each and everything i am going to discuss it in my today's session so dear students, let me start my today's session now. First of all, we will start with what is a computer? How we can define a computer? Oh, computer is nothing but which consists of mouse, keyboard, monitor, CPU. It is not the correct answer. Here we are talking about the definition of computer. When we are talking about the definition of computer, what is a computer? It means a computer is an electronic machine. Yes, of course, we should we should agree with this point. A computer is an electronic machine. What it will do? It will do three works. What are those three works? First of all, it will accept the input. Next step processes that input which the user has given. And finally, it will produce the output. So these are the three steps that our computer makes use of to do some work. What is What are those three, three steps? Accepting the input, processing the, processing the input and finally, producing the output for example let us say this is our computer what it will do what it will do first of all it will take the input first who need to give this input to user should give this input to the computer and what computer will do it will give the output okay this is how so yes we can see what we have given input we can see what the computer has given the output but what we can't see is the processing who will do this processing this step is very very important we call this step as, step as processing step who will do this processing computer will do this processing input processing and then output is it right let us take one example of calculator so in our mobile phone in our smartphone also we have the calculator what we will do for example let me show you one example here to define the computer so let us take there is one calculator which is available with us. This is our calculator. Now in this calculator, I want to add two numbers. How many numbers? Two numbers. So what I will do? First of all, I need to give input to this calculator. This is calculator, for example. I need to give input. So this is the input to this calculator. Let us take this calculator as, a, as an example of computer. Now what are the inputs I will give? Suppose 3 plus 5. So here 3 is one input and 5 is another out, another input. 3 is one input, 5 is an input. These two inputs are given to this calculator and what I want to do, I want to add these two numbers that is addition, sum operation. Then what I will get output, you know, immediately the computer will give the output. What is the output the computer will give? It will give the output. What is that output? Yeah, it so this is the expected output. This is the output which we will get in calculator. So input should be given by the user. Who will do this processing? Calculator will do this processing. And finally, what user will see? Output. So same way, even the computer will work in the same manner. Even this calculator is a simple type of computer. Okay. So this is one definition of computer. Then another definition which we can give for the computer is this one. A computer is an electronic machine. What it will do? Two things. It takes the input raw data and it will convert into meaningful information. So a computer is an electronic machine which converts which converts raw data. So here let me take this one. This is the raw data and it will convert this raw data into meaningful information. What is raw data? Unprocessed data is a raw data which the user will give, which is nothing but the input, unprocessed data. After processing, what the user will get? Meaningful information. Okay. So this is about, we have went in depth regarding the 
definition of computer. So both these definitions you can write in the exam also. Is it right? Next thing, a computer is made up of hardware or software. Next question. Yes, of course, a computer is a combination of both these two things. What are those two things? Both hardware as well as software. So, a computer is a combination of hardware as well as software. When we compare the computer with a human body, let us take our body. In our body, whatever the physical appearance which we will see is a hardware, of course. What is software? You can guess. What is software in human body now? It can be the soul. Once the soul is not there in the body, we call that body as a dead body. Similarly, a computer with only hardware without the software is a dead body. So, in order to make that computer work, in order to make that computer alive, it is required to use the software along with the hardware. Then only it will become a successful computer, which or in simple words, a working computer. So, both the things are necessary, hardware and software. Okay, the next thing. Now, let us discuss about hardware now. What are the hardware components of a computer? This is very, very important topic. So, there are total five important hardware components of a computer. Number one, input devices. Number two, output devices. Number three, CPU, which is a central processing unit. Then we are having two types of memories, primary memory and then secondary memory. So, every computer, when we are talking about a electronic machine which takes the input, processes the input and produces the output, it will make use of this five hardware components. Okay, whenever I am using the word hardware, that can be seen by the user. You and me can see that. Okay, that is a hardware which we can touch, which we can feel. That is hardware. So, these are the five hardware components of a computer. So, let us discuss this one by one now. Let me start with the first input devices first. Okay. So, input devices. So, what are input devices first of all? So, whenever I am saying the word input here, input in the sense user want to give something to computer, that is input. Okay. Now, I am a user, I want to interact with this computer, what I should do? I need to give some data to this. I need to give some data to this electronic machine. So, what data I am giving to that computer, it will become input. Okay. Something from outside world is given to inside that is the electronic machine which is the computer is the input. So, the devices which will do this work, they are input devices. Okay. So, what are the some examples of input devices which we can come across? Yes, of course, mouse. We know everybody. By using mouse, we can interact with the computer. We can select options. Okay. Even we can select the icons and we can open some applications. So, total interactivity can be done with the help of this mouse which is an input device. Next, we are having keyboard. Of course, keyboard is a primary input device. Why we are saying keyboard is a primary input device? The reason is, if there is no keyboard attached to the computer, then it is difficult for the user to interact with the computer. Yes, of course, nowadays we are having touch screen. But before touch screen, if you want to interact with the computer, compulsory there should be a keyboard. Is it right? So, keyboard is another input device. Then we are having scanner. What scanner will do? Why we are calling this scanner as input device? The reason we are calling this scanner as input device because what scanner will do? This is a scanner. It will take hard copy as input. So, what scanner will do? It will take hard copy. For example, you have something which is in your hand. It can be a paper or it can be any document. It can be any type of document which is in your hand. That is a hard copy. Hard copy will give input to the scanner. This is like a photograph. And what scanner will do? Scanner will generate one soft copy as the output. You know what is meant by soft copy? Soft copy is the electronic representation of the hard copy. It is a soft copy. So, now I will ask one question. Simply put that answer in the comment section now. You know, I want to, my, one of my friend told me, please send your Aadhaar card, Aadhaar card in WhatsApp. One of my friend told me, yes, we required your Aadhaar card. My dear friend, please send me in WhatsApp. Now, my friend is asking me to send my Aadhaar card in WhatsApp. Now, whether I should send, whether I can send hard copy or soft copy in WhatsApp. 
simply put that answer in the comment section now so that if the answer is correct surely you will get a heart as well as like from my side okay so this is what is the work of scanner it will convert the hard copy into soft copy which is the electronic representation of the hard copy is it right soft copy then comes some more input devices like we are having web camera and then we are having microphone okay by using microphone also we can record the voice and it will be stored in the computer so we are giving something to the computer then we are having joystick by using joystick many people nowadays they can play the games so whenever they are playing the games means they are interacting with the computer they are giving some input to the computer so again it is going inside the electronic machine that's why we are calling it as input device and even the digital camera okay that is also one type of input device where the picture will be immediately captured into the electronic machine it, again it is going inside the machine so it is a input device okay so these are some of the input devices for us now next thing that will we will continue now in this session is the output devices so so what is output device reverse we are communicating with the computer through some input some information we are giving some information to the computer automatically we are expecting some information from the computer so whatever the information computer will give to us return back it can be done with the help of this output devices so let me give some example the best and the regular output device that everybody will use is the monitor itself so what monitor will do what is the main pur 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 main purpose of this monitor it is mainly used to display the output okay so here you can see whatever you will type whatever you will interact that information will be displayed on the monitor so for example here i am displaying some text this text will be displayed on this particular monitor output device this is monitor which is a basic output device and then we are having one more output device is a printer so what printer will do already have told you scanner scanner will convert hard copy into soft copy so the printer will do the opposite work what printer will do it will take the soft copy for example i will show you what printer will do it will take the soft copy as the input and once the soft copy is given once you will give some print by using computer it will generate the hard copy so hard copy soft copy once it is given to the printer through computer it will convert into hard copy this is how the printer will work that's why we are calling it as output device so computer is communicating with user by giving some output what is that output in the form of paper which is a hard copy is it right so and some more output devices speakers what speakers will do we should know that when we want to play some songs or when we want to listen something then from computer computer will give suppose once you click some particular icon some video file or audio file then that audio file information will be given by the computer through the speakers so these are nothing but the output devices so these two these speakers are nothing but the output devices for us okay and then so now we will discuss about the most important part of the computer which is cpu central processing unit okay central processing unit cpu so actually whenever we listen the word cpu everybody you will get one picture in your mind is it right or not this one okay sir this is cpu sir dear students this is not actually cpu this is is a cabinet actually this is cabinet then why we will use the word cpu here because cpu means processor that processor is available inside this cabinet we will store that processor inside this cabinet because of this sometimes we will use this word cpu also for this but the correct word is it is a cabinet which stores all the internal components of a computer this is cp this is cabinet actually and inside this cabinet cpu is available i will show you next so this is just a cabinet and then this is our cpu central processing unit or processor so cpu is known as the brain of the computer what we call cpu it is a brain of the computer why we are calling cpu as the brain of the computer because the entire work of the computer will be monitored and managed by this 
CPU itself processor. Nowadays, we are having various types of processor in the market. Like we in olden days, we used to have dual core processor, core to dual processor, Pentium 4 processor. Recently, we got i5 processor. Next, i7. Before that, we have the i3 processor, i3, i5, i7. Okay, and Apple has recently launched M1, M2, M3 chips also, their own processors. So, why we are why the importance of processor is there in the market? You know, because if the processor is high end one, if the process is having more speed, then the work can be done very fast. So, automatically the speed of the computer will increase. So, what is the size of this CPU now? The size of this CPU is a one inch. It will approximate within this finger size it will come okay let me show you okay this is what we call this one motherboard now the question is sir where we will keep this uh, processor in the motherboard what is this motherboard actually motherboard is a hardware component which acts as a place where all the other components of the computer will be attached to this and the entire working of the computer will be handled by this board and in this board again there is one important leader what is that? Who is that leader? You know, this is processor and the place of the processor is this one in motherboard. Here the processor will be kept and above this processor there will be one cooling fan that is used to make that processor always cool so that because it is regularly doing the work, okay, whenever you switch on the computer to make it cool, cooling fan will be kept at the top of this board and the processor. Okay, the next thing, this is motherboard and see here. I am showing you one picture how the processor and CPU will be inserted in the motherboard. So, this is the motherboard picture and this is the slot and in this slot, okay, you can see here, this is the slot where the CPU will be, processor will be attached. Once it will be attached and it will control the entire motherboard, okay. And this is the fan that I already told you that. Once first motherboard will be available on the top of the motherboard, the socket will be available, CPU socket. On the CPU socket, CPU will be stored. Once the CPU will be stored, above that fan will be kept above the processor so that it will make that processor cool always. Is it right? This is how the motherboard look like. Okay. And the next thing, the important part along with CPU. Okay. How CPU is vital in a computer along with CPU the additional memory is very very important we call that as computer memory you know whenever we are using the word memory means you should think about a storage place so nowadays not only speed matters but also memory also is very important criteria because if without memory then what is the use of a speed computer if you don't have the place to store the data so every computer makes use of two types of memories how many types two types of memories. What are those two types of memories? Number one, primary memory and number two, secondary memory. Okay. In the name itself, we have the answer primary. Primary means first importance. The, this memory is very, very, very important one. That is why we are calling it as primary. Without primary memory, computer will not run at all. And then we are having the next type of memory, which is a large memory, which is secondary memory. And what are the examples for, for primary memory? First example for uh, primary memory is itself is the RAM, random access memory. Okay, and then we are having various options for secondary memory, magnetic tape, floppy disk, which we used in olden days, optical disk, CDs or DVDs, hard drive, flash disk, and even at present we are having solid state drives also. So, SSDs. So, these are all comes under the category of secondary memory. Okay, how we can differentiate between this RAM and that is primary memory and secondary memory. Primary memory is much more faster compared to secondary memory with an expense of money. For example, primary memory is very costly whereas secondary memory is cheap. And primary memory you will find in less, num less size compared to the secondary memory which you will find in more gigabytes or even terabytes of memories also to store the data. Now, how this primary memory and secondary memory will work? I will show you next. Okay. Let me show you first of all the pictures. How the RAM will look like? This is a RAM. It is like a size of this pen or scale, small scale. This is how the RAM look like. Okay. And you can see one word which I have used here for RAM. What is that word? It is a volatile memory. 
what is volatile memory temporary memory ram is a volatile memory volatile means as as soon as you turn off the computer the data inside the ram will be erased okay once you turn off the computer the data inside the ram will be erased once you turn off the mobile phone the data inside the ram will be erased okay that's why we are calling them as volatile memory this is ram so rams are available generally in 1 gb 2 gb okay then 4 gb 8 gb 16 gb okay 32 gb 64 gb at present 128 gb so these are the ways in which the rams are available and they are very costly okay and the more amount of ram it will be there in the computer the speed of the computer will gradually increase okay then how the ram will be inserted sir where is the place to insert the rams sir again same thing motherboard so in the motherboard slots are available in this slots the ram should be inserted you can see here okay and what about secondary memory for secondary memory there is one more word that we need to know that is it is a non volatile memory secondary memory is a non volatile non volatile means permanent once the data will be stored in secondary memory it will remain for a long period of time until the user will delete the data manually okay even if you turn off the computer also the data will not get erased from secondary memory that's why we are calling it as non volatile memory sir what are the examples for non volatile memory so you here you can see these are some of the examples of uh, non volatile memory we are having memory card okay then we are having flash drives or pen drives dvds hard disk and this hard disk has been replaced with ssd at present okay so these are all the large storage capacities okay where we can store the data for a long period of time now when we are talking about the measurements of memory so you know that memories cannot be measured in grams or kgs or milligrams okay whenever we are talking about memory we should know this terminology first so because of that i thought to keep all this uh, measurements for you in terms for in terms of memory you can see here a smallest unit of a computer memory is one bit which is a one binary digit actually it can be either zero or one okay and then next size starts at 8 bits which is one byte okay and then it starts then next 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte okay so 8, 8 bits so when i am talking about 8 bits so let me take one example here in computer what what will happen in computer you know so let us say this is a memory so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 for example this is 8 so how the data will be stored here so 0 so when when i am talking about here let me show you an example okay how the data will be stored in the memory like this Z, like this in the form of zeros and ones 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 so if i ask you what is the size of this memory the answer is 8 bits how we can say that it is 8 bits see here this one and this one so this is 4 plus 4 so is equal to how many 8 bits so when we are talking about 8 bits means how many bytes it is 1 byte 1 byte of memory this is 1 byte so that measurement i have shown here in this is it right this is 1 byte similarly 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte and at last i have given you 1024 bronto byte is equal to 1 geo byte okay like that in future okay we can expect all these memories to come into existence in next generation computers soon we can write we should, soon we can get all these memories practically also is it right so next the last thing that i want to discuss in the computer fundamentals video in my today's session is about software so with this let me close my today's session so now all these hardware components input devices output devices cpu primary memory secondary memory along with this five hardware components software is also very very essential part of a computer without software computer will not run so what is actually a software software is nothing but it is a collection of programs what is software it is a collection it is a 
collection of programs software is a collection of programs by using those collection of programs once they are collection of programs are available in a computer user can use that computer so this makes the computer work properly so software okay next thing this is the overall architecture of a computer how our computer works with the help of hardware as well as software you can see here first of all whenever you purchase a new computer only hardware will be available inside that if you and who is going to use that computer finally user if user want to use the computer directly if user will use the hardware it won't work so what user should do next thing user there is need of one more software above this hardware which is the operating system so this operating system is very very important so this is a system software once you have purchased the hardware next operating system should be there what are the examples of operating system in computer windows okay we can take the example of android in mobile phones we can take the example of ios in apple mobile phones we can take the example of mac in apple macbooks okay these are all operating systems once the operating systems are there then you can install applications what are the applications you can install so for example when we are talking about mobile phone you can download the apps from play store when if you are using an apple mobile phone you can download the apps from app store so these are all apps so my question to you is if operating system is not available without operating system can we install applications directly to the hardware means no it is impossible in order to make this hardware work operating system should be there if operating system is there then only you can install applications and who can use this applications user can use this applications is it right so this is the architecture of computer that you should remember okay and i told you there is one type of software system software and then application software these are all examples of application softwares you can see here like computer games word processor database internet browsers and what are the examples for system software so the examples for system software is operating system software operating system and what this operating system will do it will make your mouse cpu disk printer everything to work it will provide that interactivity with all the hardware devices is it right okay so these are all nothing but examples of system softwares which we have used in the computers so windows xp windows vista windows 7 windows 8 windows 10 windows 11 which i am using currently in this computer so these are all examples of operating systems so dear students these are all the points that i want to discuss even though they look basics but everybody should have the knowledge about all these terminologies computer is an electronic machine which accepts the input processes the input and finally produces the output and how many hardware and computer is a combination of two things one is hardware another one is software what is how many hardware components are there in the computer five hardware components input devices output devices cpu primary memory and secondary memory when we are talking about the software computer is a, a computer is a designed by using two types of software so one is system software another one is application software so a system software should be available to make the hardware to work then on the top of system software application softwares can be installed those application softwares can be used by the end user like you and me so i hope that everybody have got the fundamentals and basic concepts of the computer so any type of questions simply you can put it in the comment section so dear students share this video with all your friends and relatives so that they can get the maximum knowledge about basics of computer so soon i will come with the more uh, more types of concepts related to the engineering as well as other educational fields with this let me close my today's session of video see you soon everybody take care allah hafiz